In Adams County, Colorado, County Clerk Josh Ziegelbaum had to overhaul his workplace. So this is headquarters. Yes, this is the elections office. This area has changed. It's more secure now than it was. Correct. Um, and there's panic buttons. There's panic buttons Each underneath. Clerk has an really tried to harden the office as a target as much as we could. Those safety measures extend way past the doors of his office. And I have had some incidences in, in the past where people have followed me back to my neighborhood. You were followed. That prompted me to start talking with the sheriff about you know, personal safety. Uh, he recommended that I wear a, a ballistic vest whenever I feel necessary. I wear one pretty much every single day. What does it say that you are the county clerk in this county, and you have to come to work every day with body armor. It, it says that you know there, our democracy isn't as, as probably healthy as it should be. Democracy in America. There, uh, Josh Ziegelbaum was talking with ABC News about his precautions he has to take because of threats of violence, people following him home. But also, um, as this is all going through, again, we've been talking about the violence and maybe even folks in conservative circles and candidates themselves saying that the violence is coming from the left. The violence is coming from the left. Look out, the violence is coming from the left, right before they laugh about some violence headed towards Nancy Pelosi's home. It doesn't have to make sense, they just have to keep saying it. But there were some threatening phone calls that also came in, let's watch more. You frauded out America of a real election where Donald Trump blew your lie out of the water and will kill you. Do you know um, what happens to corrupt Democrat politicians? And election officials, you know what happened? They learned firsthand the hard way why the Second Amendment exists. Already, armed poll watchers in tactical gear have been monitoring ballot boxes in Arizona, raising the specter of conflict and even violence in the election. Hey, Congress, did you realize that that's the point of the Second Amendment? Because I keep hearing it from conservative circles. I thought the point of the Second Amendment was freedom to carry your gun, to defend yourself in your family, in your home. Not to then say, hey, I don't like the way that you're working that election office. I'm going to come kill you. That's what the Second Amendment is for these days. I would say that. Uh, a lot of the founding fathers is probably turning over in their graves because the American education system is so trash that we were taught that we're supposed to be taught that the Second Amendment is for like tyranny, tyranny. I'm country, so I said I always say it wrong, <laughs> right? But it was for defending yourself against the government. Now we hear people talk about the Second Amendment being uniquely deployed against their fellow citizen, their fellow patriot, and we see like you lost in the sauce of gun manufacturing propaganda. You see what I'm saying? And really for me, but watching that clip made me think about all of the ways in which we use ethnocentrism, how we center American culture for being the beacon of truth throughout the world. And that we are literally going through a lot of the things that we are inscribed on another country and justify invading them. I.e., they can't have a peaceful election. American presence is needed. We're gonna make sure we're gonna, you know what I'm saying, invade over there. Oh, oh, them over there are threatening people and they can't have somebody to be elected. Oh, we're gonna go over there and invade and make sure they have a good election. Meanwhile, we got people that have to have like <laughs> bulletproof vests to do their job. It's not a good look. In fact, in many cases, it's kind of been the case since a very long time in America. We say a lot of things, but we don't always back it up. But the thing is, is now information and access to this, this type of stuff is a lot more accessible. People can see it, people can show it, people can film it. So we see the differences in what we say versus what we do. There is a little bit of light at the end of this tunnel though, because there was one county clerk at this entire office that she thought, you know, these elections get stolen. The government's coming for me. Where's my Second Amendment right? I'm not sure if she said that part. But she did have a change heart once she finally saw, because people have to see it for themselves for them to believe reality from someone else's perspective that shows you already. Let's watch her uh, her story here. But sometimes the best medicine is transparency. Stephanie Ferris joined the Adams County Clerk's Office just after the 2020 election. I am very proud of this job. I came to Adams County as a skeptic because of what I'd seen on the news and in the media. And, and um, I was very rewarded or very excited to find that there are so many 
quality checks, almost redundancies that we do to ensure the vote and to ensure the quality of the vote. Interesting. So you came into this job thinking you can't really trust elections or there's well, something wrong with them. Right. Yeah. How does that happen? You know, all of the bad things that you see, how in the world could that happen? And so. And how do you feel now? Oh, it's almost an impossibility that those things could happen. It's almost an impossibility that those things could happen. So it takes, so it seems like it's gonna take everybody who's bought the BS to then have to become an election worker just to discover what it is that people go through and the threats that come and actually see the process to see it rather than listening to someone else tell you what it is that didn't experience it at all. This is where we stand, man. Hey, the paradox of fake news, that's all I'll say, the paradox of fake news. In, in, in narratives being built that's not really in reality and how some people will literally have their actions and have their feelings and have their emotions manufactured off of something that didn't exist.